Welcome to a short video about portrait posing. Now, we're going to cover some basics, as I usually do with a portrait group, and cover a little bit about the lighting, uh, which you've had in previous lectures, and then we'll be telling you how to pose your subjects. If you have the good lighting, like this uh, young student here has, and she's using a reflector, see she's shooting through the little window in the reflector um, to fill in the shadows, and now she's going to pose and shoot a couple of shots of these two friends of hers, and then we're going to review and uh, see if we can improve those. And that's the method that we use for you to learn posing. You got to shoot and then review and then make improvements. So let's begin with the head and shoulders axis basics. Now, <clears throat> uh, you'll see in these diagrams that I have drawn a triangle that the base of which is the shoulders and also the eyes. And this is displaying what the axis of the eyes and the shoulders are. In the upper left, you'll see that the head and the shoulders are on axis. And when they're on the same axis, it makes the model look wide, heavy, powerful, confrontational, and very engaged with the camera. And it's used for thin people, athletes, politicians, and children. I would not use this for people that are uh, overweight or, and women do not respond well to this pose unless they're very thin. So we want to be careful about avoiding the one that's in the upper left. Now the next one is called a 7 8 uh, pose and it slightly minimizes the look of being wide and it also softens the confrontational look instead of having the model look directly at the camera. They're looking a little bit to the side and you'll see in that the triangle coming off the eyes is aimed to one side of the camera and the shoulders are aimed to the other. Now uh, the next one the head is at the 7 8 pose and the shoulders are at the 3 quarter pose and this is the most common of all portrait poses. It slims the model and creates a diagonal shoulder line which adds to the interest of the composition. See how one shoulder appears higher than the other? That, that adds interest and it also slims down the subject. Now the second to the last one is the head on axis and shoulders on the profile. So the body is turned quite a bit to uh, the side and uh, this is a very good pose for slimming your subject. It's very common for overweight subjects. It also minimizes a double chin when combined with a high camera angle. In this shot, the model is having the shoulders axis turned to one side, uh, about a 45 degree angle, and then the eyes are looking right at the camera. The last one is the head and shoulders profile. This is the most common editorial pose to show someone doing a task. So if the subject is not focused on a task, he may look dreamy or spaced out. So you don't want to have the subject just looking off into space unless that's your intended purpose. Uh, I've made a few of these a little bigger so you can see the difference. The one on the left, the head and, neck, head and shoulders directly at the camera and then we've turned the shoulders ever so slightly on the middle one and the subject's eyes are to the side of the camera and then the preferred one that I use all the time is the one on the very right where the shoulders are at the three quarter pose and the subject is looking just to the side of the camera. Now, direct on axis angle of head and shoulders can be very intense and confrontational. Um, <clears throat> Yosef Karsh did these shots. Uh, it, it, Mr. Pei, uh, he's a famous architect. The mood has been softened by a wider view and the, the tilt of his head, but he is a very thin man and he's looking right down at the camera and his shoulders are focused on the camera too. Um, 
next shot is the shot, famous shot of Fidel Castro. And when Yosef Karsh began his photo session of Fidel, Fidel was in a military outfit and he was very confrontational and intense looking. And Karsh wanted to show this. So he he did this shot. Uh, and as we'll see in later shots, he managed to change uh, Fidel's pose and soften him quite a bit. But he he really was very successful in getting an intense look on this first shot. Um, now, these are examples of seven-eighths head and shoulders posing where the shoulders are turned ever so slightly in one direction or the other. And the subject is not looking uh, directly at the camera. Notice how the intensity of the subject is diffused by directing the eyes away from the lens. The one on the right, it's a pretty famous shot of Winston Churchill. Um, he, uh, Joseph Karsh was only allowed to take one exposure of Churchill. And um, so Karsh asked Churchill to not be smoking his cigar in the shot. Churchill refused. And so Karsh just went over there and grabbed the cigar right out of Churchill's mouth and walked away from Churchill and uh, then, and snapped the picture uh, while he was walking away. And Churchill is really looking angrily at Karsh's back as he walks away with his cigar. And um, he's just off angle ever so slightly. Uh, so he's not looking right down the barrel of the lens, but it's a very, very effective shot. Now these are the shoulders at a 45 degree angle to the camera and it's very flattering pose for all subjects. Uh, notice how the direction of the eyes can make the subject connect with the viewer or seem aloof or mysterious. In the lower left, uh, Sophia Loren is got her shoulders turned uh, three quarters to one angle and then she's looking uh, just to where, just to the right of the camera. Uh, but it's not an intense stare, but it is a very pensive stare, and it looks like she's looking at the camera, but she's just off axis ever so slightly. That's a very common pose that Karsh used for women. This one of Jackie Kennedy, she's looking uh, quite a bit off to the side, and it's a little unnerving because she's not connecting with the camera. Uh, but her shoulder axis is really quite good. Now, the shoulders set at a profile and head at a 45 degree angle is also uh, quite good. And you'll see in these examples, Karsh has used the subject's hands as important elements in the composition. So uh, the, the leader of Saudi Arabia is on the lower left and it really softens his uh, mood and pose by having him not look directly at the camera. And also the uh, shot of uh, Jimmy Carter, uh, where he's looking off angle ever so slightly from the camera. Uh, and this is very typical. Uh, Karsh always did these shots of US presidents using this pose. Very effective. And also the fact that they're using, he's using fairly harsh light uh, with Rembrandt lighting. So you see that up da upside down triangle underneath the uh, eye on the shadow side of the face. Very effective. Now here we uh, see when the subject is taken in profile, they will seem as dreamy, calm, spiritual, or peaceful. The profile pose uh, diffuses all the aggression in a subject. And if the subject's eyes are turned toward the camera when they are in profile pose, they may look uh, scared or, dece or deceitful. So uh, in, Karsh chose not to uh, have the subjects look at the camera at all. Uh, in the lower left, we see uh, it's towards the end of the Fidel Castro portrait session, Karsh has um, managed to get Castro to take off all his clothes except his boxer shorts. And he, what he's done is he's uh, begun making uh, Castro in the session look very mean and threatening and and th these are some of the final shots where it's very sensitive portrayal of Castro. Um, and the whole shooting session took about 45 minutes so Karsh knew what he was going to do and he got uh, Castro to collaborate with him very well. 
Um, then we see Ronald Reagan there, and he's looking um, off into the distance. Uh, and it does make him look a little spacey, but it's a very effective pose, especially with that beautiful uh, loop lighting uh, and a lot of shadow. That's a, that's a very dark portrait except for the highlights. And then we have uh, Jerry Ford and his wife uh, looking away from the camera, really nice uh, posing. So I have these posing diagrams. There's uh, four sets. One of them's um, children, uh, which we're seeing here. And uh, what I recommend that you do is photograph these right off your screen. Just pose, uh, um, pause the video and photograph them off your screen. I will attempt to send these to you by email as well. Um, it really helps to have these on your cell phone when you're posing your subjects. Then you can choose a pose because your subject does not know how to stand. It's really up to you to pose the subject. And these uh, tips will help. You can pick one or two and use them for your portrait sessions. So this is the children. Um, this is the couples. And couples are tough to pose. So the, you'll be able to pick a couple of these poses. Uh, and it, I think your subject will really, really benefit from this. In the second row all the way to the left, I love this high angle shot of a couple where you're, you're holding your camera above your head and they're looking up at it. It's a very flattering pose for couples. Uh, this is for a woman pose posing and um, there are a lot of classic poses in here. And this is for a man uh, subject. All right, so let's look at Josef Karsh. Uh, he, he, I believe, was the greatest portrait photographer of all time. He used that giant big 8x10 camera that you see, just taking one sheet of film uh, for every shot. So it was a very slow camera to use. You could imagine you just have to load in a sheet of 8x10 film in there, take one shot, and then unload the camera and unload and then load up another 8x10 sheet. Very slow. Uh, these are some poses by Josef Karsh. Uh, while interviewing subjects, Karsh would pose them and make notes about their posture, the shape of their face, how they held their hands, and many other traits. And this was before he began his shooting session. He usually interviewed them for about an hour, and he would make these um, notes in a shorthand of geometric shapes. And then when he photographed the model, he'd have his notebook there and he'd refer to these geometric shapes to pose his model. Here we see Sophia Loren, a really famous shot. And again, he's using, uh, he's referring to these geometric shapes. These are all famous actors and heads of state. Okay, so I'm going to show you some portraits that I've done uh, in the Karsh style, sometimes a little more modern, and of course they're in color. This is split lighting with a nice uh, fill reflector and a hair light. This is a, a nine-year-old kid, and he's looking directly at the camera. Uh, it's making him look as big as possible. And I'm also lowering the camera angle, so it's slightly below eye level. It makes him look a lot more adult. This uh, subject is looking directly into the camera to make him look very intense. Uh, here I've ha I have her body. She's very thin. She's looking uh, with uh, shoulders, and the access is directly to the camera, but I have her face turned one way and her eyes turned another way. So there's really three access positions in play here. The shoulders straight onto the camera, the head at a 7 8 pose, and then the eyes uh, uh, breaking the access line looking on the other side of the camera. And it makes uh, people look Sometimes like they're hiding something 
or uh, very tentative. Just straight ahead um, uh, split lighting here. Uh, and this is uh, Paramount lighting. Um, this is another one where someone's, I've got them, uh, their face is, their axis is looking to one side of the camera and then their eyes are looking to the other side. Makes them look somewhat suspicious and intense. And the low camera angle too helps. Uh, this is a kind of complicated uh, setup. Um, uh, my nephew uh, worked at Pixar for 25 years and he's out in front of the uh, the Pixar building and <clears throat> they have an enormous table lamp there. It's, it's about 20 feet high. It's in the background and but I'm lighting him with a single light uh, that I'm holding with my left hand and creating the uh, um, the Rembrandt lighting. Uh, this is uh, again. This is um, split lighting. Uh, another split lighting with uh, soft window light. And you'll see you see the subject is uh, turned um, about seven eighths uh, to one side of the camera, and his face is um, also turned to that side of the camera, but it's only slightly. Uh, turned and then his eyes are directly at the camera and these are some of my grandkids uh, they're they're quick shots but I have taken the time to set up the lighting um, and so I when you're taking pictures of children I recommend that you set up the lighting and everything in advance so they can just step in you can get a good expression and in one minute you're done with them Now this is a nice soft window light with a reflector and again uh, window light with a reflector also window light and window light okay well that's all uh, I hope you get the idea about how to uh, do some posing and I look forward to seeing your results